Hello, and welcome to this Quick Plays video on VPIP. Online poker players using a HUD, or considering using a HUD, are inundated with a ton of stats to choose from, but the most important stat by far is VPIP. In this video we'll discuss what this stat is, how it works, and its application when analyzing your opponents. First, what is VPIP? VPIP stands for Voluntarily Puts Money in Pot and is a preflop stat. You may see this written online as VPIP or VP dollar IP, but they both mean the same thing. The legacy formula for VPIP is simply the number of times a player put money in the pot divided by the number of hands. So if a player played 80 hands and voluntarily put money into 15 of them, he would have a VPIP of 19%. The more current formula for VPIP is actually the number of times a player put money in the pot divided by the number of hands minus the number of walks. And a walk is simply when everyone folds to the big blind and he wins the pot. We subtract walks because in a walk situation, the big blind has zero opportunity to voluntarily put money in the pot. But I think the best way to understand VPIP is to see it in action. So let's look at a hand. Let's analyze each player's VPIP for this single hand. In this hand, early position open limps for $1. He has voluntarily put money into the pot and would have a VPIP of 100% for this hand. Middle position folds and thus didn't voluntarily put money in and would have a VPIP of 0% for this hand, and the cutoff raises to $5 and due to his voluntary raise also gets VPIP for this hand. The button then folds, giving him a 0% VPIP, and the small blind folds as well. Now players new to the concept may be confused because the small blind did put money into the pot with his 50 cent blind, but remember, the key part of VPIP is the voluntarily aspect. The 50 cent small blind was a forced bet, and when the small blind folds before putting any voluntary money into the pot, he will have a 0% VPIP. The big blind on the other hand decides to call, voluntarily putting in an extra $4 and thus gets 100% VPIP. And lastly, the early position open limper decides to fold. But because early position had already voluntarily put money into the pot with his $1 open limp, he still keeps his 100% VPIP for this hand. Regardless of what happens from this point onward in the hand, everyone's VPIP in this hand is set in stone. That being said, there is one special situation that I want to discuss real quick. In this hand, middle position open limps, the cutoff limps behind, and the big blind decides to check his option. We know middle position and the cutoff both have 100% VPIP in this hand, but what about the big blind? At this point, the big blind hasn't voluntarily put money into the pot. Remember, the blind is a forced bet, so his VPIP for this hand is currently unmarked. If the big blind were to check the flop and then fold to a flop bet, he would not have voluntarily put money into the pot and would end up with a 0% VPIP for this hand when he folds. But if the big blind were to bet the flop instead, then he did voluntarily put money in the pot and would get 100% VPIP for this hand. And it doesn't matter if the big blind bets, check calls, or even check raises the flop. The fact that he voluntarily puts money into the pot gives him VPIP for this hand. Normally when we look at a HUD, we won't see players with 100% or 0% VPIPs. This is because the formula for VPIP is again the number of times a player put money in the pot divided by the number of hands minus number of walks. So if a player plays 5 hands and they looked like this, where he had VPIP, no VPIP, VPIP, no VPIP, and no VPIP, with 0 walks possible, he would have a VPIP of 2 out of 5, or 40%. Over large samples, even of just 100 hands or more, we will get a nice idea on how many pots a player is voluntarily entering, and we can use that information to take better lines against them. If we were to quickly graph VPIP ranging from 0% to 100%, what we would find is most players with very high VPIPs, usually 40% or higher, are going to be fishy players. These players enter too many pots, usually with weak hands, and they are easy to spot with this large VPIP. Just to visualize it, here is what 40% of hands look like, and a player who has this many hands in their range is very likely to be fishy. On the contrary, players with very small VPIPs, say under 10% at full ring or under 16% at 6 max, are usually very nitty, only voluntarily entering pots when they have very strong hands. To visualize this, here is what 10% of hands look like. And remember, a 10% VPIP means that he's playing an average of 10% of hands from all positions. So he likely isn't stealing much, doing much bluff 3-betting, or getting involved in pots without great hands. In general, players at 6 max will have higher VPIPs. 
For instance, it's common for a tag at full ring to have a VPIP of around 15%, and a tag at 6 max is usually going to be closer to 20. But players with very low VPIPs are almost always nitty, and players with very high VPIPs are more likely to be fish. Just remember to keep sample size in mind. Over a few hands, a tag could get zero playable hands and look like a nit, or a string of hot hands and look like an aggressive fish. But over time, you'll get more hands and his VPIP will average out to a more realistic portrayal of his actual playstyle. For VPIP, I consider 40 hands to be a broad idea, 100 hands to be a good idea, and 300 or more hands to be a great idea. This is really what VPIP is used for, getting a quick statistical idea of how loose or tight a player enters pots and using that to estimate the hands he'd play and the strength of his ranges. VPIP is the most powerful stop because it's calculated in pretty much every single hand and gives great information while converging the fastest of any stat on your HUD. And now that you know what VPIP is, you can start using your HUD better to find new ways to exploit your opponents based on simple statistics. Same as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck and happy grinding.